everyone, it's Tom, and what you're looking at here is a split between Hitman 2 on right and the original Hitman on left. And to really go into depth about what we're seeing here, I'm joined by John Lenneman. Tom, it's good to be here. How are you doing? Yeah, pretty good. Of course, you've uh, taken points on looking at the game in detail. We've already had your kind of breakdown of the engine and what they're doing in Hitman 2. And you pointed out to me that all the original levels are included, well, there's an option to play the original levels in the sequel, supposing you have the original game on your account, or if you buy like the legacy pack. Exactly, so yeah, they've continued with, and I love to say it, the world of assassination theme here, where you know everything's bundled up under one menu now, and they've transitioned all the original Hitman 2016 content to work in their new engine. I mean, it's still the same engine, but it's been enhanced again. And it's not the first time that these maps have been enhanced either, uh, which is what's really interesting here. The original 2016 version received an update in 2017, which changed the lighting to appear sort of a more reddish, orangish hues and a little bit more colorful. It was quite a difference from the more muted palette of the original. And by bringing it to Hitman 2, we're kind of seeing another shift in the lighting, in addition to a whole bunch of other cool little features, though they're kind of subtle. I went through and, well, the most obvious one, let's get that out of the way, is the lighting. Definitely there's a change in tint. They've gone from the, the sort of reddish hue to a, a definitely a, a cooler color temperature which I actually don't like as much, if I'm being honest, but it comes with a swathe of other upgrades and it's hard to overlook. But yeah, definitely the lighting's improved. They've got things like the bloom and lens flare effects we've got in the main Hitman 2 levels, the new ones. They've been retrofitted into these older cutscenes and the gameplay, so. Yeah, they sort of fit those around on like bright spotlights and objects, you know, TVs, neon signs, um, direct lights. They use this a lot in the sequel, and it's kind of neat to see it return in uh, these original Hitman maps. I mean, I could see a situation where some folks may not prefer this look, but I do think it's cool. And hey, if you do prefer the original, you can still play uh, the 2016 version as its own thing. This is just a bonus to add extra gameplay features and visuals to those old maps. One detail you went into great depth about was the reflection quality and the change in reflections in the sequel as well. And that's kind of added to this version as well. So what's going on there? How have they gone about the engine overhaul in the sequel? Firstly, I mean, I think you pointed out to me, the 2016 version does still have some instances of full reflections. So like bathroom mirrors and such do reflect the environment that was always there. But for the sequel, they've really expanded this out and they are applying reflections to a much wider variety of surfaces now, including especially glass, uh, among other things. Again, I'm not entirely 100% certain how they're doing it, but I think they're essentially capturing the scene using a secondary camera and then rendering it out to a texture. It's sort of an old school method of doing reflections, and it's not used commonly today because it's generally very expensive since you kind of have to re-render the scene multiple times into these buffers. and. Since they're applying this to different glass panes and such, it gets expensive. Hitman 2 was designed with this in mind from the ground up, but in Hitman 1, it doesn't really pop up that often, I think, with these updated maps, just because the maps weren't really designed with this in mind, I feel. I only noticed it kind of on the last level, uh, the Hokkaido stage, where basically there's glass all around, so they couldn't really avoid using it. And it's a great way to demo it, in a way. Yeah, on car doors in the tutorial level and Hokkaido, the glass has basically got a slightly more transparent look, and you can also see light bounce against it. So it is definitely in there, it's a big change, but you've also got these fairly ugly cube maps on the floor which don't really match. And they do a better job with that in the sequel. There's still cube maps in there and they seem to be more properly parallaxed with the scenery. So not a big deal, it looks all right. Beyond the reflections, the other things I think that are worth mentioning, uh, one subtle addition is improved cloth physics. This is something evident immediately in the sequel with like the curtains in the very first mission, but it applies to flags, it applies to different clothing items, and yeah, like in this one mission here, you can see 47's coat. If you look closely, you can sort of see the cloth moving more naturally around his waist as he turns and moves through the crowd versus the 2016 version. And th that I think is a pretty cool, subtle, but nice addition. 
Yeah, and there's all these sort of tiny details, including that, which are peppered across the original take on the game. The textures and assets, they're the same, barring maybe some streaming issues because we're just loading the level, so you get all these kind of intro cutscenes. Even bearing that in mind, there are some things improved and other things removed. You know, like shadow quality is definitely improved on the, the floor, so, and shadow filtering is also upgraded as well, so it doesn't look as rough as it goes into the distance. But then there's stuff like in the Marrakesh level, the smoke effects as you get closer to the riots near the kind of that major building, it's just uh, low quality or missing. And that goes for even in gameplay as you approach, you know, these billowing puffs of smoke are just reduced to a small puff basically on the floor, which is really strange because it's, uh, it's quite a substantial difference. And I can't imagine the performance is going to be much different there. Yeah, I, I don't think that has any real impact on anything. It's just probably one of those strange conversion issues, but it's a subtle boost. You can't go into this expecting any kind of major change. I mean, there's also some differences with the way the crowd system works, but from my perspective, what I thought was most interesting actually is the performance. Now, uh, as we talked about in the other video, Hitman 2016 is a rare title in that it actually allows us to sort of benchmark consoles because you can fully uncap the frame rate on the different machines and just sort of run through the stages and see like where they're at since they usually don't hit 60. In this case, I think you're running the PS4 Pro version here, is that right? That's right, yeah. Kind of output at 4K, um, but obviously the native resolution is 1440p either side. There's a change in anti-aliasing, by the way, uh, just the change in method, but actually the reading is pretty much nigh on identical, maybe a 1 FPS difference, you know, margin of error stuff. As we get to the shore in this uh, section right here, suddenly the sequel kind of takes off and there's like a 6-7 so FPS advantage there, but there's not actually much different on screen, so it's very curious. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a case of further optimization that's been made to the Glacier 2 engine. They've obviously continued to update their technology and improve it, and with you know the more advanced features in Hitman 2, it makes sense that these maps then would also run a little bit faster. And for those watching wondering, the reason we went with PS4 Pro here is because in its pre-release state, I did have issues with getting the legacy maps running in the Xbox One X version of Hitman 2. It wouldn't accept the codes properly, but as I understand it, this is just a pre-launch kind of thing, and by the time you have the game in your hands, shouldn't be an issue. And I'll be more curious to see what Xbox One X turns in, since it does actually get much closer to holding 60 FPS in a lot of these maps, so uh, maybe it'll actually get there now. Certainly looking at this on Pro, you, we're not any closer to 60 FPS. I mean, you're gonna glance it when you look up to the sky, but weirdly enough, I did find uh, playing with the unlocked frame rate was a bit preferable. <laughs> Just kind of revisiting this game, I kind of found myself thinking, I do prefer this free movement to the camera. I don't like the way it looks visually, but engaging the 30 FPS cap on Hitman in particular does seem to incur a noticeable hit to latency on uh, input. It just winds up feeling a lot uh, more sluggish, more so than a lot of other 30 FPS games. You get that kind of typical 30 FPS judder effect, especially after moving from closer to 60, and there's no motion blur really to help that. But the bottom line is, as good as the engine upgrades are, we're only getting marginal improvements, some which are just incidental because there's not as many NPCs on screen, but that's about it. It's a cool bonus feature, I think, if you already own uh, the 2016 game, since it kind of brings all the content that they've made for this new iteration of Hitman together in one menu system. To me, and I, I say this in a positive way, it kind of feels like Hitman Season 2. It's a continuation of what they started in the previous game, and I think that's a good thing. This is a, this is a great iteration of the Hitman series. I mean, it really plays well. And yeah, stuff that we're not really showing in this video, I mean, they added stuff like the briefcases back from the older games and there's a few other little like uh changes we don't really focus on that here necessarily but that stuff is also brought into the hitman one maps so it is kind of a chance to revisit them and play them in a slightly different way if it's been a while so you know that's not a bad thing and obviously if you don't like the changes you can just go straight back to the original game so not a big deal right well shall we call it there thanks so much john for joining me no problem tom and of course, if you did enjoy this quick look at Hitman 2, uh, feel free to give us a like or subscribe to our channel and to get notifications as soon as each video lands. Just hit the bell right there. And uh, this video is available on our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net. To get in touch with me or John, just use Twitter. But from the both of us, thanks for watching. <laughs>